You have to love that good for her has become an entire genre of cinema. This film is just get out for women. Uh-oh. I mean, you know what's really going on. <laughs> Blink Twice is a movie starring Naomi Aki and Channing Tatum, and somehow he's managing to just play himself and yet also play the least Channing Tatum-y role I've ever seen. This waitress who's struggling to get her life together meets Slater King, who is a big, rich billionaire with his own private island and he wants to bring her, her friend, and a bunch of other random women there to hang out with his dude bro buddies and him on an island where he is completely safe, he's got all his security and everyone works for him, and there's no escape, there's no medical facilities, there's no way to go anywhere. Sounds great, let's go! Now defining this film is difficult because it's kind of part thriller, there's psychological elements, there's horror elements, there is even a dark comedy element to it at times, which is really fascinating. It is Zoe Kravitz's first time directing, and I think she does a really great job. There are some peculiarities to her directing style that threw me off a little, some really intensities that I, I didn't love that made me feel uncomfortable, but I can tell they were meant to. I was worried going in that this might be a little bit basic. It was, you know, it felt from the trailers like there was going to be all this secretiveness and it was really going to rely on that, as a lot of thrillers do, M. Night Shyamalan. But it wasn't, and it didn't. And even though you go in and you think you know what's happening and you might just be right and you might know what's happening pretty early on, it doesn't matter. The film's still going to be really enjoyable. It's not a one-trick pony. It is in the thriller genre, but I feel like it's got... Well, you know, some thrillers, especially psychological ones, focusing on twists that are very secretive throughout, they're mysterious. Some of them. Like The Sixth Sense, maybe. Don't know why I'm picking on M. Night so much today. They have, like, the shelf life of nothing. <laughs> it's like trying to re-watch a goldfish bowl after the goldfish has died. That's not the case with this one. And that's great. And I think when you go to watch back thrillers and they actually have some kind of shelf life, that can help make them, you know, classics in the genre pretty quickly. So Naomi and her friend go to the island, they're just having a great time, all the clothes are laid out for them, they can't have their phones back, they, they don't need them, it's fine, they've got all this drug, alcohol, food going on, it's all great, they're having a fabulous time and nothing else matters. Girls, why can't you see it right in front of you? Naomi Aki is excellent, I will say, she is a fabulous lead in this, and you really had to have the perfect one, because you are, how do you introduce dark comedy aspects? into something that's got an actual trigger warning at the beginning. It's such a complex idea, and you wouldn't think that you could get away with it with mainstream audiences today, but they do it perfectly. All the lines that they kind of needed to tread to make this work, they really do. And I was worried that Shannon Tatum wouldn't be great for his role either, because he's he's like the ultimate like basic white guy. But he's been that for so many years, but considered that for so many years, that he doesn't actually get that many leading roles, and he's had to go away and become this kind of interesting character actor and what he pulls off here is really weird really different and works really well and i feel like they wanted to use him because he has that charm that you kind of are like yeah even though he's just this basic white guy like he's cool right that's shot did him but although i don't think it's like a really really top tier film it's not going to be one of my top you know five for the year or anything it is really well done i don't know how many films could make it so clear what direction all the mysterious thriller aspects are going and still pull it off so well and make it so watchable, so enjoyable throughout. It is a great piece to this really growing phenomenon genre of good for her films. Um, and it is, it feels angry feminist to a degree. But not a, no, not a re not really. It it manages that very well too, because sometimes it's just brutal, brutal man hitting, which is okay, but not necessarily as enjoyable as this managed to end up being by kind of straddling the line a little bit more. What it does, I really appreciate. It's terrifying in its own ways, but it is excellent, and I'm giving Get Out for Women four stars. No, but really goes unaware with a charming white person they feel safe with, find out the dark, hypnotically related secret behind the place, have to fight their way out, have, you know, dark comedy aspects to it. I'm not saying it's ripping Get Out in any particular way, but the similarities are fascinating. 